the boy wonder, the kid, the miracle man, the keeper's nightmare, the phenomenon, the unstoppable, the number nine, the king. Heels too. Before Messi and Cristiano, there was a superstar so special that people called him El Fenomeno. He was like nothing anyone had seen before and his name was Ronaldo Nazario. Skillful, effortlessly elegant, he is your favourite player's favourite player. Even Jose Mourinho, who is Portuguese and coach Cristiano, says he would pick the Brazilian Ronaldo. Best player you've ever seen? Yeah. That good? That good. Wow. So. How did Ronaldo Nazario achieve football immortality at such a young age? Ronaldo burst onto the football scene at Cruzeiro, making his professional debut at just 16. In just two seasons at Cruzeiro, Ronaldo scored an outstanding 44 goals in 47 games, an incredible output that earned him a spot in Brazil's 1994 World Cup squad at just 17 years old. Despite not playing a single minute into the tournament, he returned from the US as a world champion. While Ronaldo had already made a name for himself in Brazil, he also had his fair share of admirers from overseas, and following the advice of his Brazilian teammate and legend, Romário, Ronaldo moved to PSV, a move Romário himself had made when he first ventured into Europe. And you'd think that moving to a completely new league at just 17, Ronaldo would struggle, or at least he would need some time to adapt. But that wasn't the case at all. In fact, this is what sets Ronaldo apart from many modern legends of the game. His prime years began when he was just a teenager. He scored a goal on his debut, a brace in his second game, and hat-trick in his third. Leverkusen's Rudy Feller, seeing Ronaldo's hat-trick, said after the game, Never in my life have I seen an 18-year-old play this way. And for those who suspected his early game output was a fluke, Ronaldo silenced the doubters by scoring a whopping 35 goals in 36 appearances for PSV that season. Mind you, he was just a teenager in his first season in Europe. These are the kinds of numbers you expect from a seasoned veteran. But the greatness of Ronaldo extended beyond his goals. He was a complete footballer. He possessed qualities rarely seen in a single player. Blazing speed, physical strength, incredible agility, insane dribbling skills that terrorized defenders, and a deadly strike that left goalkeepers with little to no chance. The whole world was in awe of the teenage sensation, and some of the biggest clubs around Europe were already plotting to snatch him away from PSV. However, Ronaldo ended up staying for another season, this was also the first time Ronaldo's struggle with injuries began, which sidelined them for more than half of the season. Despite the setback, he managed to score 19 goals in the 21 games he was fit. He won his first trophy in Europe, lifting the Dutch Cup with PSV. After that season, PSV couldn't hold on to him for much longer, as Barca and Inter battled out for his signature. Eventually, Barca succeeded in acquiring the Brazilian sensation, splashing out a world record fee for him at the time. And just like at PSV, Ronaldo started his chapter at Barcelona with a bang, scoring two goals on his debut. He continued to dazzle everyone, putting on a show week in and week out. His playing style was so flamboyant that the whole of Spain fell in love with him, and no goal encapsulated Ronaldo's utter brilliance more than his solo goal at Compostela, where he dribbled past five players to slot the ball into the back of the net. In everyone's eyes, there was no question who the best player in the world was. It was the dazzling 20-year-old Brazilian. His 1997 FIFA Player of the Year award further reinforced this notion, making him the youngest winner of the award. It was a consolation for missing out on the 1996 Ballon d'Or by just a single point. A month earlier, Ronaldo had finished his debut season at Barcelona with a staggering 47 goals in 49 games, 34 of which came in the La Liga alone. For comparison, Messi achieved his first 30-plus goal season in the league at age 22, and Cristiano did so at 23. 
while R9 accomplished this at just 20 years old. Most would argue that Ronaldo's debut season at Barcelona was him at the peak of his powers, before any of the injuries that would later change the course of his career. After his incredible debut season, where he also won three trophies, Barca moved quickly to offer him a new and improved contract to secure his future at the club. However, talks broke down and Ronaldo controversially made the switch to Inter after Marathi activated his release clause, making him the world's most expensive player for the second time, something only achieved by Maradona. While he didn't score on his debut like he did at Barcelona and PSV, Ronaldo's prolific form continued in the Serie A. He scored 34 goals for Inter that season, including a magnificent goal in a victory over Lazio in the UEFA Cup final. Ronaldo was awarded the Ballon d'Or midway through the season, becoming the youngest winner in history. After securing a major trophy with Inter, now Ronaldo flew to France with the hopes of securing another, this time the World Cup. Every Brazilian looked at him to carry the team to the final, and that was exactly what he did. Ronaldo scored four goals en route to the 1998 World Cup final, where the host nation France, being led by Zidane, awaited. The French team trained specifically on how to stop Ronaldo, though many of them knew it was almost impossible to contain him once he unleashes those dazzling stepovers. <laughs> <laughs> but behind the scenes, there was a lot going on regarding Ronaldo's availability for that final. Just hours before the match, Ronaldo was nowhere to be found on official The Starting Eleven, thus making everyone look for answers. After all that noise, Ronaldo was put on the starting 11 just before the kickoff, and to this day, nobody know why all this fuss happened. After much discussion, Ronaldo did play in the final, but it was France who claimed the victory with a brace from Zidane and a goal from Petit. Despite this, Ronaldo was awarded the tournament's golden ball for his finest play at the World Cup. By the following season, Ronaldo faced some issues with his knee, but still managed to make 19 appearances in the Serie A, scoring 14 goals. In the summer of 1999, Inter signed Christian Vieri from Lazio for a world record fee, and the prospect of him and Ronaldo forming a deadly duo sparked hopes among Inter fans. However, those hopes were quickly crushed when Ronaldo ruptured a tendon in his knee during a game against Lecce. It was a very serious injury that led him to miss almost six months. In April of 2000, Ronaldo returned to the squad that faced Lazio in the Coppa Italia final. He was subbed in during the second half to a warm applause from the whole stadium. Just six minutes into the game, Ronaldo attempted his famous stepovers, but without any contact he fell onto the grass and screamed in agony. If the injury six months ago was scary, this one was horrific. His physio Nilton Petrona stated, his kneecap actually exploded. It's the worst football injury I have ever seen. It was later determined that the injury was far worse than initially assumed, and there were even doubts if he could ever play football again. Nilton Patron later reflected on Ronaldo rehabilitation, saying, One day, in the middle of the night, he called me and asked, Tell me I'm going to be able to play football again. Please don't lie to me. Ronaldo was sidelined for 523 days, but somehow he made his return in the 2001-2002 season. The injury had taken away the explosiveness that made him a terrifying force. Even after his return, he suffered another setback, this time with a hamstring injury that sidelined him for three months. The guy just couldn't catch a break. He only managed 10 Serie A appearances that season, yet he scored a remarkable seven goals. Then came the 2002 World Cup, where Ronaldo proved he was a once-in-a-generation talent. Despite his horrific injury and doubt about whether he would ever play football again, Ronaldo showed a prolific form, rarely seen at a World Cup, scoring eight goals in the tournament. Two of those goals came in the final against Germany, securing a 2-0 victory in Brazil's fifth World Cup title. He was on top of his game again, delivering what can be considered one of the greatest injury comebacks in football history, and his Ballon d'Or win that same year further cemented his status as a phenomenon. But Ronaldo, before and after the injury, were two different players. Before his injury, many would place him as the greatest of all time, alongside Pele and Maradona. 
He was truly a phenomenon. To this day, he still remains one of the biggest ifs for many football fans. This is why many of the great players looked up to him and he would always have a special place in the hearts of those who watched him dazzle on the football field. Ronaldo's legacy transcends his injuries, cementing his place as an icon in the world of football.